Hey everybody, welcome back to Linux Cast. I'm your host, Matt. I'm joined by Tyler. How you doing? Doing good, man. Doing good. Good. So I hear that a certain amount of years ago today, you came into the world and you said, I arrived. So happy birthday, my friend. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Many happy returns, as they say. Uh, <laughs> so other other than getting another year older and another year grayer, uh, what have you been doing on Linux this week? Um, well, living life without a bar in DWM, which is, uh, actually turned out to be, uh, really, really nice. Uh, it, it forced me to make a, um, a whole bunch more bash scripts for the functionality that I would typically just do in the bar, um, which is really nice. Um, I really like it. I, it. It's forced me into doing a whole bunch more bash scripting this past week. It's been a lot of fun. So, um, on that same vein, what have you been up to this week in Linux? Well, I have also been doing a little bit of scripting, but not nearly as much as you. I watched some of that stream. I was like, you streamed two days in a row, six hours one time, like five hours the next time. I'm like, dude, <laughs> 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 that's, that's some dedication right there. Um, but I love streaming, man. I love it. I can do it. I can do it exactly one time a week. That's you. Although, if we'd end up doing this live every week, I'll end up doing it twice every week, and that scares the crap out of me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, anyways, I, I I'm working on a script that will allow me to change rices for whatever window manager I'm using. Uh, mm -hmm. So that should be fun. And if I can swing it, it would be great to have the script just restart the window manager at the end of it. So it just hit a key binding and I can go to a different rice just by hitting a key binding. That'd be so cool. That's my plan anyways. Um, we'll see how that works out. Yeah. I have a feeling that it's probably not going to work out as well as I hope it would. But my, my brain says it's going to be awesome. Uh, anyways, I've also been working on the website for the, the channel and the podcast. So I'm knee deep in and css and html and uh I, i've come to realize that i don't know html and css worth a damn <laughs> uh, like i used to i used to be really good at html and css i when i had a website doing a tech blog or whatever and was messing around with all that kind of stuff i was pretty good at it. i mean i'm not professional or anything but uh that's been at least 10 years and mm -hmm. i mean maybe eight or nine years and uh man am i rusty <laughs> Like it's like like I, I, like I do remember how to make a link, which is <laughs> a good start. Yeah. So, <laughs> but I'm surprised I remember that much. I used to remember all that stuff, but man. And one thing I will say about CSS, I've uh, I've been hearing this quite a bit, is like nowadays with a whole bunch of the like dark theme plugins and stuff. When you're trying to do like some nifty things with CSS, it'll just break. Like just one plugin will just break your entire site. Yeah everything is so finicky now, especially with all those JavaScript libraries and stuff. It's really weird. All right. So I, I promised myself each week that I'm going to get the contact info down to like two or three lines. I haven't got there yet, uh, but we're getting close. So you can, if you're interested in uh, following us or any of that kind of stuff, you can do so on Twitter at the Linux cast. You can subscribe to all of our audio feeds and stuff like that at thelinuxcast.org. Eventually, that's where the website I'm working on will be, but it's not there yet. Uh, give it a while. Uh, don't hold your breath because uh, I don't want you to pass out or die. Um, anyways, if you want to get in contact with us via email, you can do so. Email at thelinuxcast.org. You can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. You can support Tyler, who goes by Zany, on Odyssey and YouTube. Those links will be in the video description below. And you can subscribe to the Linuxcast on YouTube at YouTube. I almost made it all the way through, man. Uh, you can <laughs> almost. To, oh, oh, so it's like, that's close. You can subscribe to the Linuxcast on YouTube at youtube.com slash linuxcast. That was both better and worse than normal. So. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, t to be honest, making it through that entire thing smooth is difficult as heck. There's just, it's laid out in a way where there's just so many links. <laughs> yeah, and, well, that, and you have to use the same word. So contact us via email at email at, it just feels <laughs> weird having the word there twice. And then subscribe to the Linux cast at youtube.com slash Linux cast has the word there twice. So it's just, as a writer, you're not supposed to use the word in the sentence twice in a row, and it's just, it really messes with my brain, and it's not, 
then it's early in the podcast. Usually somewhere about halfway through the news is when I decide to wake up. So we should just push this <laughs> after the news, and then it would be fine. <laughs> there has to be a, a, a running pool out there. When will Matt mess up the contact information? And usually it's the, the winner is uh, at the Twitter part. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure everyone's more focused on when you're going to do a full gen to install live. <laughs> yeah, I have a Patreon goal. Patreon.com slash Linuxcast. <laughs> uh, that, 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 that Patreon goal is arbitrarily high is uh, <laughs> definitely on well, purpose. <laughs> let's be real. You're you're your own best sponsor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So each and every week, Tyler and I scour the internet to try to find at least one link each of news that we can share with each other. So this week is no different. Tyler, what is your news link of the week? Mine is Elementary OS six is getting its uh, first big post release update, and this was actually posted. 50 minutes ago. So this is a fresh, fresh news article here. Um, and so apparently what we're going to see in inside of this elementary OS six update is a whole bunch of more compatible apps in the app center, which thank God. Um, it, well, at least it, it's not uh, less at compatible apps like it was last time. <laughs> yes. It's whew, much needed. And then here's the big one that I think is, um, I, I think it's probably uh, addressing the fact that so many of us were criticizing this about elementary OS six when we all tried it out. The app center will now show a link to flat hub if there's no ser search results. So it's at least smart enough to know, Hey, if you're searching and it's not here, you need to go to flat hub and install it there. And then it'll open up, open up the program again and you can install it there. And then you most likely won't have the problem of no search results again. Still not necessarily the best fix in my opinion. Why don't the, they just integrate FlatHub into the app store? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's just the way it should be. I mean, even the, uh, like the, the, Ubuntu stores, they integrate integrate from Snapcraft.io or whatever, SnapHub, whatever that's mm -hmm. called. So, I mean, it's obviously possible. I mean, I don't understand why. Why do they think they have to go through and approve every single app that's in their store if they're going to use FlatHub? Precisely my point. Like, it just, it just make it easy to use for everyone. But, I mean, we got to... Uh, I think that's just one of the issues in the Linux space that we're going to have to overcome when it comes to developing in a lot of areas. We're not really even the built like um, distros built for new users still assume stuff about new users because we're in a niche that you shouldn't assume about a new Linux user. Understanding that going to FlatHub is going to magically make more software appear in the software center is not something you should assume right. whatsoever. Well, and I think but. it would be safe to assume that if you're a new user, you would probably want to be able to download certain pieces of software that are necessary for, you know, using your computer for things like <laughs> uh, browsing the web and office tasks and things like that. And uh, you can't download th at least prior to this point, you couldn't download things like Firefox. You can download things like uh, Google Chrome. You can download things like like uh, LibreOffice. I mean, I can understand the whole Google Chrome thing. You may not want to host that in your in your software store. Fine. But Firefox, I mean, that shit's open source, man. That's supposed to be... Yeah. I, I, even the most diehard fans of Elementary OS aren't using Epiphany. I'm going to tell you that right now. The most diehard fan out there, the guy who, who runs it day in and day out and just loves that shit to death, is not using Epiphany. They've used Epiphany, but then they probably used it to download Google Chrome or they used it to download Firefox. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the, I mean, that, that's the whole when you when Edge used to be you know, like really terrible, like when it was just Microsoft's thing, it wasn't based on Chromium. That's what you used Edge for was to download Chrome. <laughs> 
<laughs> on Windows, <laughs> right? So, because <laughs> that's how you download shit on Windows is by going to the web store. And wait a minute, that's what you have to do with Elementary OS is go to the web to download things. This seems like awful lot like <laughs> Windows. When, <laughs> like, what are we doing here? <laughs> yeah, it, it's just, uh, I, I, I will give this to them. At least it's getting better. At least it's getting better because elementary OS six out of the gate was not hitting their their target category of people, which is just hilarious. But eh, is what it is. I mean, we go on and on about this, but just one last thing: for a distribution that has so much positive, or not, it has so many people that want to like it. I mean, because, you know, it's good looking. It used to have a ton of software, you know, and the development team seems to be very interactive with the community. It's, you know, it's theoretically could be possibly the best new user distro out there. I mean, if they mm-hmm. if they want it to be. Uh, but every time they do something weird, it just sets them so far back and pisses so many people off. And... and yeah, it's really <laughs> Ryan's his thoughts on Gen 2. <laughs> the whole chat's not down there's like Gen 2, Gen 2, Gen 2. You know what? No. <laughs> Go to your corner, you Gen 2 fools. All right, anyways, moving on. So my link of the week is that supposedly GNU slash Linux turned 30 years old a few days ago. And why I say supposedly is because no one's actually agreed on this date, because technically what they're celebrating is the email that Linus Torvald sent to whoever, I guess it was in a mailing list, uh, announcing that he was working on Linux. That was the 30th anniversary. Uh, The actual first kernel wasn't released until sometime in October, I think. Uh, And as DT pointed out yesterday in his video, GNU actually started being developed in the like the mid 80s so it was very entertaining this past week to see videos to see articles like the one i'm showing on screen now happy 30 birth 30th birthday linux and it wasn't just foss related uh like websites this was on like the register and uh, the daily telegraph or telegram or whatever the hell it's called and zdnet was on there had 30 like Hold on a second, folks. Let's just for a second hold on. Let's see if we can agree on a date first, and then we can start celebrating 30 years. Uh, so it's really, really weird that we can't kind of get together on the fact that, uh, you know, our, we can't get together and agree on a date where Linux actually was created because the, the first distros weren't actually released for a couple years after that. Like, Debian didn't come out until like 1993, I don't think. Mm-hmm. So. And that was like one of the first two distros. The other one was Slackware. Is that it? I don't know. Maybe I was like I have no idea. I was like seven years old. You were. I mean, you were like what two? <laughs> uh, I was born in ninety seven. So you're born in not. Holy shit, man! You are yeah. young. <laughs> no, you uh-huh. weren't even. Old. You, know, you were. You were almost born with Ubuntu. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's hilarious. You are young, man. Wow. Mm-hmm. And, and you still I'm the baby of the community. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're just, and I, I thought you were a little older now, and I'm a little uncomfortable. Uh, <laughs> like, are you even allowed to go into a bar yet, Tyler? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, barely, yeah. Barely. <laughs> like, just a few uh, years ago. Like, call me back when you're allowed to vote there, youngin'. All right. <laughs> All right. So, uh, anyways, that was a stupid link. Um, that was, that was a stupid thing that came in, uh, happened to the community this, this week too. I just gotta understand it. All right. So before we jump into the, to the main topic, let's ask for questions. And if it has anything to do with Gen 2, I'm banning you. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments section below and then we'll, uh, we'll answer them. <laughs> So, native gaming on Linux, is it important? Mm, that's a good question. This was your topic, so why don't you cut us off and we'll wait for those questions to come in. No sense of just yeah. awkward silence while nobody asks a question. <laughs> yeah, I, I honestly don't think native gaming is 
is all that important because here's the thing it's going to happen no matter what just like anything else in the world it, it's going to happen linux might, might not you know hold a big market share however it still happen. Like FOSS creation might not be the focal point of all software creation. It's still going to happen. So it's not like a native native Linux gaming is ever going to die, but it honestly doesn't need to be the focus. Um, I think what Valve is doing is very, very smart in pushing for develop your, your game for whatever platform, whether it be for Windows or whatever, and it's just going to work everywhere else. Takes takes effort off of developers and and valve is one of those companies where they don't i mean they're not google they don't just create something and kill it off next year because they just you know it's whatever it's google they just kill off products left and right because so i i don't really think it's all that important would you disagree all right so my question as i usually do I answer these questions with questions. I should be a psychologist. Uh, <laughs> my question would be is, uh, does native game Linux gaming make games better? And I think we can answer that question is sometimes. Uh, sometimes native Linux gaming is better than, ha- you know, having a, a Proton thing. Because as much as we like rah-rah Proton, there are some <laughs> cases and... It's actually fairly common where the Proton implementation of a game is kind of terrible. I mean, it's just kind of bad. Or your game doesn't launch, or you have to go through and install 9,000 different dependencies, like you're trying to install Plasma or something, you know? <laughs> so, so, I mean, there are situations where the native port of a game is actually a better experience for people using Linux. Uh, that being said, I 100% agree with you that it does take focus away from the actual getting of the game running well on Windows and then maybe them focusing, making it work well in Proton. If they fo- focus, put their focus on making their game work well in Proton, then we don't need a, a native game. Now, those pe- those developers that don't care about Proton either, uh, they were never going to make a native port any- of Linux anyways. So, Yeah. Man, Buddy was ready to pass out before the before the stream started. Now he's like, play again? So Ryan in the chat says, uh, question for Matt. Thoughts on Buddy? My thoughts on Buddy are is he needs to pipe down, bro. <laughs> Chill. <laughs> no, I love Buddy. He's great. Um, I, I f- feel like we're good friends, Buddy and I. <laughs> Uh, I, he's I, friends with everybody I, I do find it hilarious you guys not, might not know this about Tyler but he's always talking about going out with buddies like he has a bunch of friends and he calls them buddies so it's not ironic that he called his dog buddy <laughs> I'm just saying <laughs> so either he's named it after a bunch of his friends his group of friends or he named it after the elf I'm just, <laughs> it's possible <laughs> um, let's see here what else what other questions we got Matt thoughts on you know, Linux never heard of it. Never heard of that either. Is that is that pronounced Unix? Uh, he is a Unix. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. Oh, someone did uh, have two questions. I like these. So, what's your favorite distro? I can pretty. I, 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 I'm going to make a guess on this one for you. It's Arco. It Am is, I wrong? It is Arco. Yes, Arco is my favorite. <laughs> uh, do you actually have a favorite distro? You hop way more than I do. Mm-hmm. Uh, my favorite distro is Arch, and just hands down, just mainline Arch. Um, but I have found a very, very like very deep respect, and it comes in second is Void Linux. It's very nice. Uh, really like it. I I would be on Void and continuing to use it if it wasn't for my VPN. Seriously, it's a very large v- VPN, private internet access, not understanding that the only init system out there is not system D. Like it it only recognizes system D. That's it. Don't don't they have like an open VPN bridge or something that you could use? To be honest, I know nothing about open open VPN. I I know how to download the install script. 
for private internet uh, pri- private internet access and run it. And that's about as far as I know when it comes to VPNs, open VPN, all of that type of stuff. That's it. That's all I know. So I'm, apparently, Onic or whatever the hell it's called is the old name for Gentoo. <laughs> of course, it is. <laughs> uh, thoughts on Core Boot? Do you think it's worth it? No, okay, it's I'm, not. I'm going to go with Tyler there and say no. Uh, no. Google as ads company, they kill anything until they are fed up with ads and buy it. ads money. Okay. Uh, okay, so I kind of got distracted there by the main topic. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Uh, if we do this live again, we'd have a dedicated quick question section, but it's hard to ask for questions and then wait for the questions to come in and not have anything to do while you're waiting. So... Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so that was definitely something that we'll have to plan further in the future. Uh, actual question, though. More and more people are asking me for a beginner-friendly Linux distro. The more people find out I use Linux exclusively, I have no idea what to recommend. So what would we recommend? Us. I would recommend either something like Linux Lite or uh, Sparky Linux. Both of them are really, really good. Um, and they don't come with the political connotations of something like Linux Mint or uh, Elementary OS. Uh, if you use those, you're going to get embroiled in their conflicts with Ubuntu. Um, mm-hmm. I would not recommend straight up a, straight up Ubuntu just because it doesn't look anything like Windows. So uh, <laughs> uh, use something that looks like windows so maybe if you had to choose one like cinnamon uh the cinnamon spin of ubuntu would probably be a good one um what do you think my recommendation would be completely different and again i i agree with your recommendations i I think they're good i mean there's so much to recommend that's good Mm -hmm. that it's 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 hard not to have a different one, but mine would just be Manjaro, only because I I know some people have their problems with Manjaro, but um, my thing with Manjaro is it makes rolling release pretty easy. Whether you not like you, you like the style of it out of the gate, it's Linux. You can change that. Like uh, I, I'm pretty sure a new user will eventually find that out and be really surprised because Manjaro does make it really easy too to change themes and all that stuff. But at the very least, when it comes, I like recommending Manjaro to new, new Linux users because a lot of the times I don't know their hardware. And if it's something newer, something like a Linux mint or something like that, it's just, it is because the kernel is so old. There's not, it's not going to work for them. Yeah. Uh Oh, I'd love to be able to recommend Arco. I really would, but it's just, <laughs> it's not like new user friendly. It's just not. Yeah. Uh, laptop or PC for home use? Depends on how much space you have, I'd, mm-hmm. I'd say. And if you would like the opportunity of like when you decide you want to go somewhere to at least take your computer with you, yeah. that's that's what I like about having my main workstation be my laptop. Yeah, I don't um, go, I don't go places. So. <laughs> So I have no, I have no problem with just having a desktop. So uh, I, I have laptops; they're all old as fuck, and um, they uh, don't work very well. So that's just—I mean, I always miss my multiple monitor setup. So, uh, do you agree with that? The best web browsers are starting with E. Which one is your favorite, Edge or Epiphany? <laughs> I'm never gonna live that down. <laughs> never. To be honest. This is going to be crazy, but out of the two of those, I would rather use Edge than Epiphany. Epiphany is so bad. Yeah. It's so bad. All right. So, in defense of Edge, it is a very good web browser. If it was made by anybody else, literally anybody else other than Google, like if it was made by, I don't know, uh, Joe Schmo's web browser company, uh, <laughs> people would use the crap out of it. It's really, really good. Uh, the only reason why 95% of the people who subscribe to my channel hate it is because it's made by Microsoft. Mm-hmm. Um, that's literally the only reason why. And those 95% of people, or the vast majority of those guys, never tried it. Well, I mean, I've tried it. And the, even if it wasn't made by Microsoft, I wouldn't use it. But, I, I mean, I would still recommend it compared, compared to it not being owned by a company that just does bad stuff 
typically. Um, but anyway, Edge is Edge is just a Chromium browser with some really good and sensible like plugins or extensions built into it. Mm-hmm. It's nice. Like it's just it is nice. I mean, it would be really good if it didn't beg you for a Microsoft account. Oh, yes, they always make you to sign in. They always want you to sign in. But see, the thing is, I have a Microsoft account. I just use that for, um, they don't know my real name. They don't know my real age. They've never had a credit card or address or anything like that. So, uh, I, I and the Hotmail account that I have, I use that whenever I need to sign up for something that I just know is going to spam the crap out of me. So, I just add <laughs> everything there. Same with the Yahoo account that I have. Because uh, Yahoo. <gasps> Yahoo was the first email address that I ever had like on my own before I went to college and got a college email address. And then I used the college email address until they kicked my ass off. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, 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 uh, like it was two, two years after I left school. I still see that. Well, let's see here. Um, I always recommend Manjaro or Arch for programmers. Uh, I'm considering installing on what I'm assuming he means Linux from scratch and at the end this weekend. Good for you. <laughs> uh, I, I, I tried it by like Firefox. I'm assuming you mean Edge. Uh, what if Edge would be made by Apple? Still the same opinion. Uh, well, if Edge was made by Apple, it wouldn't have nearly as many features because they'd pull all that shit out. <laughs> so it would, yeah. it would therefore not be as good of a browser. Uh, well, I, I will say this. If if Edge was made by Apple, I would my opinion of it would be much better only because Apple, when it comes to their like there's a real benefit when when it comes to syncing your stuff up with an Apple ID. And Apple is a company that takes privacy very seriously. Like Apple doesn't Apple understands that their bottom line is not uh, improved by selling your data in mass. What it is in, held up by is you buying a computer that costs them four hundred dollars to make for three thousand dollars. That's their bottom line. <laughs> and guess what? There's millions of people doing it every year, so they're yeah, yeah, good. If, if there's there's a if there's enough suckers out there to pay that much money for one of their pieces, of, you know, whatever. Uh, good, good on them. That's a good business model. If there's people out there who do it, I like uh, F Society says I like Safari. Uh, I don't know whether or not he's being sarcastic or not. <laughs> I've used it before. It's not terrible, but it's not the best browser out. I mean, Chrome still does. Uh, even though I don't like Google, Chrome still beats the hell out of Safari in performance. Um, Which is but. weird because they're both WebKit-based browsers. I mean, it's just mm-hmm. really weird. Uh, the, so we were talking before we started recording that my phone is going to shit. Because OnePlus keeps pushing out updates that just continually make it worse and worse. Um, so I've been thinking about getting a new phone, and one of the options is getting an iPhone. The thing that really bothers, makes me worry about getting an iPhone is that every browser on there it has to be based on Safari. <laughs> like every single <laughs> one, they won't let you base it on anything else. Even Chrome is based on Safari on the iPhone. And that would... Um, so wait, so you can't even get Firefox? Like you, you can download Firefox, but it's based on Safari. Like what you use the the Safari web engine because Apple will not allow alternative web, web engines on iOS. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Like they, they call it for security. <laughs> I'm sure that's exactly the reason why. Um, uh, thoughts on Kiss Linux? I've never heard of Kiss Linux. You ever heard of Kiss Linux? Keep it simple, mm-hmm. stupid Linux. Yep. What is, what is it? I've never heard of it. Um, it's yeah, a a good example of explaining because it. it it is essentially just a super simple distro where you, I mean you have to. It, it's it's simple, it, not in ease of use or e, like ease of installation, but it's simple in the way that you install it. It's Musel based. They do have people I know will throw this in the comments. There is a glibc version of it, which if you're going to use Steam or something like that, you're going to need gkiss instead of just regular old kiss. But um, Kiss is a, a distro where you're going to have to set up and install everything. Like you pick out everything that you want, and it's a very simple to manage and simple to install um, 
operating system. There's not a lot of steps to it. I mean, as long as you consider picking out your own Linux kernel and everything, not having just a simple option to just install the kernel, like you need to pull it down, build it, make it yourself, and then move on. As long as that part's simple for you, the whole thing's simple. It's it's very nice. Okay. Um, I wouldn't recommend using it, though, uh, for uh, particularly people like us. Uh, I, I, I know you don't spend a ton of time playing games, but you still do, and you have your Steam library. Uh, KISS is not oriented for gamers one bit. Okay. Um, it doesn't sound all that interesting to me. All right, so somebody asked, <laughs> or I think it's Umka. I'm sorry, I'm going to butcher your name. Uh, what hardware incompa- inco- incompatibility or lack of support in Linux is still pissing you off? Uh, webcam support, bro. Uh, th- this webcam here costs $180. It's one of the top webcams on the market. It's like the top webcam you can buy before you have to start actually buying like an actual fucking camera. And it is utter garbage on Linux. It is so bad. People don't actually see the stuff because at least at least in the videos I make, I cut a lot of the stuff out. But for every once in a while, you just get green artifacting in this camera, and I don't know why. I've seen it. I've seen it. Yeah, like, it, it, it's so stupid. It, like, it makes me want to take and just throw it across the fucking room because it it just drives me absolutely bonkers. So yeah, webcam support is just ter- of all the like you can plug a keyboard in. It'll work. Most printers, you can get to work. Uh, mice, uh, audio interfaces, all that stuff. Even as much as we bitch about Pulse Audio, most for the most part, that stuff just works. Uh, webcams, though, utter, utter, utter garbage. There's like no support out there for them at all because all of them require this fucking proprietary exclusive software in order to update their firmware and stuff. Mm-hmm. And you can't get it to work on on Linux unless you're like a uber hacker or something. So yep. I, went, I went so far... As to install Windows on that computer back there in order to upgrade the firmware, and it didn't work because the gar- the software was garbage. So that would be my answer to that question. Yeah, I pretty much agree. Uh, I mean, you, you mentioned it, but Pulse Audio for me, the hardware incompat- incompatibility that drives me crazy is when it comes to new newer laptop stuff. The, uh, I mean, if your if your laptop's newer than a couple years. Um, even on the latest Linux kernel, you're probably still going to run into some, into some weird issues where you'll have to uh, shoot a kernel command to um, keep the graphics cards in your computer from switching automatically because that can cause issues. Uh, and then your internal sound card will just crap to bed sometimes. And if, if you boot your computer up with a whole bunch of audio or USB interfaces plugged in, I, I believe that's just a Pulse Audio problem, but I'm going to chalk it up to just Linux as a whole because I've experienced it in so many distros. There's only one that I haven't experienced in, and Void, you're beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, somebody asks, if Gen 2 is $350, uh, I'm assuming this for the Patreon goal, uh, how, how much for Slackware install? Uh, the thing, the thing is, is I know jack shit about Slack Slackware. I've never Same. even looked at a video of somebody installing it, so I would have no clue whether or not that's more difficult than Gen Two or less difficult than Gen Two. I'm assuming, based on that question, that it's probably more difficult than Gen Two. Uh, but uh, I have no clue. I don't think yeah, you. Got, I don't think you got to worry. I'm at like seventy four dollars now, <laughs> so we got a ways to go there, bro. <laughs> um. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, go back to the main topic. That was a nice little inter- intermission for some questions. Mm-hmm. Uh, so native Linux gaming, we kind of answered the question, but um, here's another good question. Do you think that for, for the bigger studios that native Linux gaming is probably just going to be gone completely? Mm. Yes, yes. Um, for AAA studios, they've already really... I mean, Rocket League is the perfect example of a AAA studio that was focusing or at least paying uh, Linux gaming its proper you know, attention and then just stopped. 
Uh, so I think with Valve pushing Proton and stuff and making it seem like there's really no reason to focus on native gaming, for bigger studios, man, it just won't happen. Yeah, I agree. Um, I, the question we have to then ask is, are we disappointed with that? And I think my answer to that question would be, it depends on whether or not they focus on Proton. If those studios actually put some effort into making the Proton their proton compatibility, you know, really good, then I don't think we'll actually miss uh, the native Linux stuff. Uh, if we get what we have now, which is basically them oh. focusing on Windows or maybe Macintosh, uh, and it works on proton just because uh, Steam and Valve are, you know, wizards, and, you know, <laughs> it just kind of works, which is basically what we have now. We hope and pray in miracles. Um, th then it's going to be, well, you know, I really wish there was a native thing for this, or at least they focus on Proton because this is a crap, this is a crap experience. You know, either you're getting 15 frames per second, and it's unplayable, or, uh, it won't launch or it crashes or something like that. I mean, that's, you gotta remember, I'm not a gamer, but the vast majority of my experiences, at least so far with Proton, have not been all that pleasant. Uh, I got, I subscribed to the EA Pass in... Steam the other day. It was like 30 bucks for a year. It's like, this is a really good buy. 30 bucks for a year and you get all these games. You get Madden and you get all these racing games and stuff like that. None of those things actually work on Linux worth the damn. Uh, <laughs> even Battlefield 2, which has like a, a platinum rating on ProtonDB, I couldn't get to launch. Like, it just won't launch. Uh, I haven't tried that one yet, so... it's. I mean, it's just... I'm assuming that there's a dependency or something there that I'm missing, but that's not that's that's not a good experience, and you, you go out and spend six hundred dollars on a Steam Deck, and that's your experience. You're not going to be very happy, a very happy camper, mm -hmm. like at all. So, I will say one thing: I am really hoping that a lot of the rumors being spread are true, where it's going to end up where um, we're going to get like a massive, massive update to Proton, at, like right before they start shipping the Stream Decks. Yeah. I think, because that's what everybody's hoping. Like, everybody's hoping that, you know, anti cheat's going to be there, DRM is going to be fixed, and uh, Proton's going to have this sudden leap forward in terms of being compatible with games that, you know, it only has been mediocrely supportive of in, in the past. I think we're all going to be massively disappointed. I'm hoping not, but I, I mean, I'm not... I, I, I'm still taking the hope with a grain of salt, you know? <laughs> yeah. I, like, I, I'm just... Maybe it's the pessimist in me, because, like, I, I, I am very much a half a cup, half empty, or whatever the hell it is, uh, you know? Glass half full. Yeah, whatever. Um, <laughs> cup half empty. <laughs> but, like, I am, from, I, I am from the north. I shouldn't be using these southern things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> So, but I, maybe it's just the way I look at it, the world, and I just don't expect it to happen. So I'd be I'd be pleasantly surprised if it happens. But I ex fully expect the Steam Deck to come out in December or January, uh, and I bet I would expect it to be not as good as people had hoped, um, which will be sad because yeah, Battlefront Two is a game that is really old. I mean, it's really old at this point. Uh, I remember playing at least one of the Battlefront games, the Star Wars Battlefront games, uh, in high school. And I've been out of high school, uh, good lord, for, I don't know, almost 20 years at this point. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, and, and that's not even, I graduated in 2004, so... Uh, you were you weren't even ten years old when I was graduating high school, bro. <laughs> I'm such a youngin. Yeah, so that's how old that game franchise is, and the fact that it doesn't work on Linux, and it may not, or I mean, at least not for me. This is from a personal experience that just points me, keeps pointing me towards the fact that I'm very worried about the Steam Deck's release because there's. So many examples of things just not working in Proton. Mm -hmm. So, but I, th I I think to go back to the main topic, I would at I would ask you this: it it do do you think there will be a negative outcome of more developers not 
focusing on making Linux a priority. I think that probably not because let's face it, there's not a ton of game studios out there focusing on native Linux stuff right now. There's just really not. The ones that focus on native Linux gaming are making open source games. You know, Tuxcart yep. and things like that. Those those game studios, if you really want to call them, you know, three guys in a garage, a, a game <laughs> studio, uh, they're going to continue making Linux games. This has no bearing on them whatsoever. Uh, the few, mo- the vast majority of uh, games in Steam that are Linux compatible and actually have a Linux game or a Linux uh, port or whatever, the vast majority of those companies are probably going to continue on doing the same stuff they've always done and let's face it most of those games are pretty old at this point too and we've been bitching for years because this the dependencies for those games have moved on and a lot of those don't work very well even though they say they work on linux so that's been a problem for quite a while too so as for a making it ne- uh, a, a negative impact on linux or whatever i i just don't see because native Linux gaming has never been that big. The only, if all we had, all right, let's put it this way: if all we had was native Linux gaming, we would never be talking about Linux gaming at all. Because all we'd be talking about is how there are no games on Linux. You know, mm-hmm. of the of the Steam library, like what twenty percent or something like that, some really small number actually yeah. runs on Linux natively. So. Nobody and cares. a lot a lot of those games that do run natively, it's mostly because of Steam that they ever started running natively and focusing on like Killing Floor really would like which which is one of my favorite um L- Linux native games. Uh, I I play it way more than I should. Um that game one of the main reasons it is it has a native Linux port is because it's easy to distribute it and easy to sell it through Steam. So, yeah, I, it's gonna. It really all comes. Everything here, everything we talked about, could be completely obsolete if the Steam Deck fails, because then it will just go back to the way it was. I think. Um, I don't think I. Uh, it's possible that Steam will try again eventually, so like two or three years down the road. Um, but if the Steam Deck fails, the games that already support Linux are just going to continue to support Linux as they have. Uh, they'll continue to get older and unsupported and all that stuff, but that's the way games are. Uh, <laughs> and we'll, we'll have Proton probably be there. Uh, my only worry about the Steam Deck failing is that, and we've talked about this before, is if it fails, does Steam then stop supporting Proton nearly as much as it used to? Because then maybe they just give up. That's a little worrying for me. Because I, again, I fully expect the Steam Deck to completely flop. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people are going to buy it right out of the gate, but those initial reviews are going to be very negative. I just have a feeling, and, and it's just, again, my negativity of, of, of viewing the world just... You know, it's just, it's just telling me that people are going to try to load up Call of Duty on that Steam Deck and it's not going to run, uh, or it's going to need, you know, dependencies downloaded from the AUR, you know, <laughs> and I can just, I, I can just see, you, you watch that video of that guy from The Verge build the computer, he's going to be oh this, God. he's going to be the same guy who reviews this probably, and then in order to get the thing, he's going to have to figure out how to download something from the AUR. I can, I mean, just, it's going to be utter hilarity. <laughs> that poor man, dude. I've never seen someone abuse a computer before it's even built like that. I don't think he still works for The Verge, and I also don't think he's ever shown his face on the internet again. <laughs> uh, no, he got, he got fired, um, then he set his mind in a little video after that. And then after, after people crapped on his uh, response to it and how childish he was, I don't think he's really graced the internet with his presence. since. (laughs) I know I wouldn't show my face. if, (laughs) Like I'm not a professional computer builder. Like I've only done it a couple times, but I did a way better job than he did. And I did that from YouTube tutorials. I mean, he didn't watch a single YouTube tutorial. (laughs) Yeah. Like Linus tech tips, man. His whole channel is built on that. You didn't watch one. 
one video? Yeah, he did. Like, yeah, LTT did like a, a build guide like once a week when that channel first started out. That was what he did. What, what they did. It was in a kitchen. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it was. It's really weird. All right. So, uh, anything else to say on native Linux game before we move to the picks of the week? I don't think so. All right, good. All right, so each and every week, Tyler and I think about things that we've used on Linux over the last week that are important or that we've you know fiddled with or something, and uh, we call them Picks of the Week because that's the most original name we could come up with. Um, <laughs> uh, and that was sarcasm. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Tyler, why don't you tell us what your Pick of the Week is? Uh, mine is, I mean, I'm sure a lot of you are using it. Um, you might, you might be using something else, but it's Dunst and it's a little program to get, you know, just show you notifications when apps want to, well, send you a notification. And I really like Dunst. Um, haven't had a problem with using it. Um, it's very reliable, easy to use, um, and easy to configure, um, the config that I'm using for Dunst, I I really like it. Notifications are big, but not insanely big. Um, they're, you know, they it it will display a much larger notification. Like I've got a nifty little pro uh, uh, script that I writ uh, writ. Good Lord, English. I wrote uh, that just. Don't worry, he had a stroke. Sorry. Just just, just a minor one. It's all good. (laughs) But um, it's a little program that uh, 30, every. It'll it'll pick a time randomly between 30 minutes and three hours and shoot me out a nice little uh, humbling insult just to keep that (laughs) ego in check. And it pipes it through CalSay. So it's this, it's this large notification. I really like the fact that Dunce handles it very well. That's cool. Um, I have Dunce Dunce installed, but it doesn't work for me. Hmm. It used to, um, but now that I think about it, I haven't seen a notification on my system in ages. Um, <laughs> and I like I have it running it uh, on startup, so something obviously is messed up there. I'll have to look into that. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, Dunce is awesome. I love being able to theme it. Uh, if your program can't let me theme it, then uh, it's dead. It's to a me. problem. Yeah, uh, and I mean actual theme, and I just choose a dark theme. <laughs> like, like Elementary OS, that's not theming. <laughs> that's just choosing a dark theme. It's okay. It's better than it used to be, but it's not okay. So speaking of theming. Uh, there is a, a few of these programs out there that are kind of like this. And before we talk about it, we should just notice if you use this program to theme your discord, it's called power cord. Just know that you're violating the discord terms of service. Uh, you, and you are, I mean, it's just the way that their terms of service is laid out. So if you install this, just know that that's a thing you could theoretically be kicked off discord for using this. Uh, it has not happened uh, to individual users. They have blocked apps like this before, but that's usually just kicking out the developers. So, um, anyways, PowerCord allows you to theme your Discord. It also has a few uh, plugins and stuff like that, but uh, as you all know, I have uh, been making, trying to make everything Grubbox themed, and Discord was the next thing on the list. And there isn't very nice Grubbox theme for Discord. Um, and it uses PowerCord in order to install. It's uh, better than Simple Cord, I think it's called. The other one is called uh, because it doesn't actually take up a ton of uh, resources. Uh, the Simple Cord one was taking up like two or three percent of my CPU just constantly, and that was just really annoying, right? Uh, this one does not do that. The only problem with this one is that you have to use be using the development branch of, of Discord in order to use it. So you have to be using Discord Canary in order to uh, have this work at all. And that means you're going to be getting updates, like, all the time. I mean, like, literally <laughs> all the time. So this will definitely work better for you if you're on something that has uh, Arch, where you can actually get those updates really quick. So, um, let's see. Last thing on the chant. The, the, the chant. <laughs> now, I've had my stroke. It's okay. Uh, theming is time-consuming. Color adjustment is not easy. Uh... I spent all my time theming, so it's okay. <laughs> Rising is good. Love theming. Uh, so, uh, what are your, what are the best fonts on Linux with icon support? Nerd fonts. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, you want to get that nerd fonts and uh, choose. If you don't have good internet connection, just choose one. Uh, then you can just download that one font because downloading the whole thing is like all the gigabytes. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's like it, it's. I'm as far as as far as I know, I believe it's sixteen gigs of yeah. font. It's it ridiculous. Takes, it takes a bit to download that thing. So if you have uh, bandwidth caps or you don't have uh, uh, you know high speed internet, just choose one and then you can choose you know, or choose two and then use those. Mm. Don't download the whole thing. Uh, per- and- personally, what I like to use is um, like I pick my one like nerd font, which for me is mono fur, um, and then I also use the material icons. Um, uh, font, uh, which I believe that's from Google, but it's it it's really nice for displaying um, different icons and stuff like that. If you want to use them up in like your DWM taskbar or a bar stuff like that. So I use Hack Nerd font a lot, um, and mainly because that was the first one that I could get. I I used that I could get to work with like um, oh my ZSH in the terminal. Uh, I've since bypassed that level of. Uh, <laughs> dumbassery or something. I don't know. Uh, like I, I finally got past that point. I can actually do it with other fonts now, but when I first started looking for ways of displaying icons in the terminal, Hack Nerd font was the only one that I could do. So I'm attached to that. I also use JetBrains Mono a lot. Um, I really like that. that. Excuse me. That's the main one that I use now for my bar and everything like that is Jet, JetBrains Mono. Uh, but Ubuntu Mono Nerd font is also actually kind of good. So... Uh, if uh, those are the three that I kind of rotate between, uh, but honestly, I'm not a font snob at all. Uh, I, my eyes, for whatever reason, a lot of the times I can't tell the difference between one mono font and the next unless they're really blatant uh, differences. Uh, mm-hmm. For the most part, most mono fonts look exactly the same to me. Now, I can't tell you. I, I haven't gone through and looked at all nine thousand different not nerd fonts. It's possible that there's plenty of differences <laughs> there, but. Um, oh, there definitely um, is. I mean, but, most people can't stand the one that I use because it's got, as oh, I like to put it, more character to it. Oh, you mean the? Uh, yeah, I can tell the difference between your Comic Sans and the rest of the the, the, <laughs> the things because that is Comic Sans, bro. Um. Uh. So, Astrolol asked, um, "Should I switch to Cute Browser?" Uh. Yeah, you should definitely switch to Cute Browser. At least give it a try. You won't. You won't be. You won't be sorry. Um, just know that there are some websites out there that don't render it, so you'll you should have something to back up when you come across that. It happens, uh, especially things that uh, require input, uh, things like Tumblr and Facebook and all that stuff. If you have you know go onto those sites, uh, those are the things I had most problems with. Um, so far, I I use Cute Browser for for pretty much everything, and the only the only site that I go to that I've noticed doesn't work in Cute Browser is. Um, Netflix. That's it. And that's only because, well, actually, if I installed the widebind thing, it worked fine. But what, whatever. And, you know, just most of the time, I'd, I I would just use Netflix uh, in Firefox. Yeah. F Society asks, what is your favorite window manager? And uh, three letters. It, starts with in a D, unison. It a <laughs> DWM. Yes, it's DWM. I think that's the way for both of us. Um, uh, I like... Uh, Qtile a lot. And I think you're the same. You like Qtile a lot too, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I just don't like the way Qtile probably in the chat right now, but somebody's going to tell me, well, Matt, you can have more than nine workspaces in Qtile. I've never figured it out. I've never taken the time to figure it out. And I don't really want to take the time to figure it out because DWM comes with 18 workspaces for me. Uh, And if I got another monitor, I could have another nine. So... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um, Art Center, just join the chat. What's up, man? All right. Hey. Uh, so yeah, DWM is my favorite, and uh, I I just Same here. I just I just like it. It's 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 good. <laughs> you know, I yeah. like I like the ability to add patches and make it cool and twiddle and tinker around with it. And I understand C plus plus at least a little bit because somebody asks you know, well like you like you like tinker and stuff why didn't you like xmonad it's called haskell i don't like it <laughs> <laughs> i'm not a big fan on haskell either uh, i i don't i can't get my head around haskell at all and i don't know why like uh, after 10 or 15 minutes with lua i could understand a little bit of lua 
Uh, I used Haskell and Xmonad for a while, for like a month. I knew less at the at the end than I did at the beginning. <laughs> it was like it sucked out my knowledge. Uh, um, uh, someone said I, th- they like Qtile, but if they change something, then it breaks. Yes, that's the problem. Like almost every time Qtile has an update, it's oh, yeah. there's a good chance your config file is just going to crap itself. They mess around with that bar like every single update. They take out widgets and change the widget names and stuff like that, and then then just the whole thing crashes and dies. Uh, yeah, that's another good reason not to use Qtile, uh, which is disappointing. They should have. We have a mechanism for that, right? We it's called long term support releases. Like release a long term support release, people can just stay on that, subscribe to that, the st- the stable version, uh, and then re- you know test out the one in like a rolling release or something. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, I've been meaning to try Xmonad. You should try Xmonad and then leave running scared. Um, <laughs> when you're done, I might actually do that uh, for the stream later. I might actually, I've never tried Xmonad before. I've oh. t- tried looking at Haskell and enjoying reading it, but that is a challenge. Yeah, you should definitely install Xmonad. Uh, I will try to watch your stream, but it's uh, it's going to be late. So you, you, knowing you, you'll probably still be streaming for a little while. So I'll be, I'll be in there eventually. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, I think that is it for us this time. We've done our done our picks of the week. We've done everything I can think of us for us to do, and we've been going now for an hour, which is surprising because it didn't feel like an hour. We had mm-hmm. had some good time. All right, mm-hmm. so that is it for us this week. If uh, you want to get in contact with us, the contact inf- information was stumbled upon earlier on in the episode, so make sure you check that out. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Devon, Chris, East Coast Web, Gen 2 is fun too. Marcus, Maglin, Sven, Jackson, Knife and Tool, Joshua Lee, Mitchell, Art Center, Merrick Camp, and Mr. Fox. Thanks everybody for watching. We'll see ya next week. Bye.